So on to our next topic of macromolecules, um, and these are proteins. Proteins are super important in biology because of how many things they do, how many uh, structures they build. And here's just a, a partial list. We have a chart coming up here on the next slide, too, that says a lot about different functions of different proteins. But here's one that we've just really talked about a little bit, um, and that is here's a receptor. So here's a protein um, that has folded and that would be embedded into a membrane of a cell into the plasma membrane to act as a receptor and just muscles here you can see a whole bunch of different things that proteins do so let's go to this chart and see we can talk about the the enzymes we can talk about proteins and how they move certain things around the body how they build structures how they build certain hormones um, how they're part of our immune system etc so very very important Enzymes in particular are super important. We've looked at these in some detail when we've said that enzymes not only are proteins, but they are proteins that serve to um, be involved with lots of different metabolic reactions, things that are going to either build up or break down substances in our body. Uh, so they're a, a vital part of chemical reactions. Um, they, the shape of enzymes is super important, as it true of all pr um, proteins and that these can be altered by changes in pH and temperature. But first, let's just look at, at our basic setup for um, everything. And so the monomers of proteins are amino acids. We can see their structure. You're familiar with these. Um, some of these our bodies actually can make. Some of them we have to take in in our diets. Um, but regardless, we have a, a set of about 20 of them. I'll go to this that are common amino acids that are important in building all of the different proteins that our bodies use. Proteins are really, really large molecules too. Compared to um, the uh, lipids or to the, um, the different uh, carbohydrates, you're going to see that proteins are very large molecules. They can be hundreds sometimes of amino acids uh, in length before they start folding, so they're they're much larger than the other ones we've spoken of. Amino acids um, can be represented in a lot of different ways. You don't have to worry about this particular slide, um, so I'm going to move forward and say let's look at how two amino acids will join, and they join through this thing we call a peptide bond. Now the one thing that is uh, that I kind of uh, went too quickly over is it, that part of what defines the amino acids is this thing called their R group. So the R group is going to be important, um, but what bonds these amino acids together is this link between the carboxyl groups, here's a carboxyl here, of, of one side of this amino acid and the amino group on the other side of the other amino acid to form this peptide bond through dehydration synthesis as we've, uh, everything we've talked about so far are. Um, and really, when we get into this thing that we call a polypeptide, what we're looking at is this long chain of the amino acids, but the protein basically is the, is the folded version of that. And so um, we'll see what those look like coming up. So four basic shapes. Uh, or sorry, four levels of protein structure. So everything starts at the primary level, right? The primary structure, which is the string of amino acids. Those, those fold, forming or start to pleat or form helices through hydrogen bonding. Tertiary structure has to do with R groups and quaternary structure, um, which is interactions between a couple of those tertiaries. So let's take a look. Here's the primary structure. Um, here you can actually see there's two parts to this protein. The primary structure of this uh, first is this long chain and then there's another uh, chain here that start to uh, link together. So these are polypeptides. As soon as these, these the coding for this is all has to do with the DNA, right? So DNA uh, sequences are going to determine what the amino acid sequence is on that, uh, on that protein. When there's a mistake, 
somewhere along that chain, that primary structure, then, then you get a, a slight difference or maybe even a substantial difference in the end result, how that protein folds, and that can lead to disease. And this one we looked at with sickle cell. Secondary structure, you're familiar with this, the hydrogen bonding, and that takes place between the, the um, very often the um, carbonyl groups and an amino group. You'll see some, some hydrogen bonding across this big long chain that starts to occur, causing that to look like it's, it's um, spiraling a bit, and forming either the beta pleated sheets, which is the, the pleating or the spiraling here, the alpha helix. Tertiary, we know that it's in the tertiary, at the tertiary level that we have really establishes the shape of the protein. Um, and that's largely due to the, whatever's happening between the R groups on that uh, initial chain. So some R groups will be attracted, some will be um, repulsed. So here it says R groups with like charges. So if you had two positively charged R groups, they would move away from one another. Some will be hydrophobic, and they might want to go inside when this is folding. Um, and then some amino acids form specific structures like this disulfide bridge. This picture you've seen, so it kind of shows some of those options. Um, so this would be a tertiary structure. This the ribbon itself, or this the red um, shape here, is the primary structure of the protein assuming that it's also then done a secondary pleating or, helis, or forming helices. And now, after that, we're getting this tertiary. And that's, we're seeing more hydrogen bonding and all of the things we've already mentioned. If we go to the quaternary, what we see are, here's a, this one in particular has, has four different tertiary structures that all of them combine and interact to form this thing called a quaternary protein. So all of those different levels as we go from primary has peptide bonds, secondary hydrogen bonds, tertiary R groups start to interact and that includes more hydrogen bonding and then for, for some, we go up to the quaternary level where we get several of these tertiaries that combine. So when proteins are in their proper form and shape, then they, they do their job. So structure and function are related. So if the structure is correct, then it's able to do its function. Um, if the structure changes somehow due to things that might change in the, its environment, so within a cell, if the pH changes or if there's a change in temperature, those can change, those can um, serve to change that structure of that protein, sometimes just temporarily so that it, it can't quite do its job. Um, but if you totally denature it, in other words, if you, if the protein structure gets uh, really broken down so that you, you're no longer in the tertiary, you may not even be anymore in the secondary, you may actually go back to almost a primary structure, then we know that that's irreversible denaturation. So this is a picture of an example of that. And that is it on proteins. I think I'll um, stop there so that I can then spend a little bit of time on the next and last group that we'll look at, which are going to be our nucleic acids.